Hello, my name is Ron Ashtiani and I'm the Creative Director for The Realm Project. So, so far we've focused on the game at a high level. We've shown you our beautiful artwork, we've given you a high level overview of our game design, and we've talked a little bit about the game story. But what we want to do in this interview is get to grips with the game design itself, the driving key pillars behind the project, and the story act structure. We're going to be talking to myself, design director Andrew Curtis, and designer Dan Gilmore in more detail. But before we do that, let's just recap what we've shown the public so far. Looking back at our long-standing love affair with the point-and-click adventure game genre, there were a number of things that we loved from classics like Monkey Island or the Broken Sword series, or Beneath the Steel Sky or Blade Runner, or contemporary titles like Machinarium, um, Tiny Bang Theory or the Drawn series, to name but a few. There were a couple of things that we wanted to move away from for the realm, the first of these was inventory management. And that's really just players having tons of stuff in their inventory and systematically trying each object out on anything vaguely interactive. And the other thing was pixel hunting. So, you know, players clicking on every pixel on the screen in the hope of finding a clue to a puzzle they're trying to solve or just something interactive in the environment. So from very early on, we decided to focus on uh, our two main characters, Toru and Serena. And we asked the question, uh, what if those characters' unique abilities and um, the way that they relate to each other really was the puzzle? So for the realm, we chose to go with two characters, uh, mainly because we wanted to create some beautiful asymmetric character uh, trait puzzles. Um, but having two characters does bring its own problems when it comes to navigation. And so that's where, why we came up with this concept of paired movement. Paired movement allows us to move Serena onto Tori's back and the two of them move together as a unit. So this makes navigating the scenes very easy. It also means that you don't have to point and click for two different characters. And it also gives us a mechanism through which we can convey the emotional relationship between the two characters. So they're, they're going to be reasonably small on screen most of the time. And so the best way to convey their connection is through physical animation and the physical interaction between them. Um, and the other great thing about this is that we can give Serena like a safety bubble. So by putting her on Toru's back, she's safe while that's happening. And she's also able to reach up high and, and grasp objects from above. So from a puzzle point of view, it just gives us another building block to play with. So Toru, although immensely powerful, um, he's quite naive. Um, so he'll often look to Serena for guidance in a world where he has very little understanding because this is a very new world to him. So in some situations, uh, Serena will need to teach Toru a new action in order to progress. And the way that this is done in the game is Serena searches the environment, she finds her interactive options, and one of those will often be to copy me. So she'll demonstrate an action to Toru, and if successful, he will perform that action, and that'll help them on their way. Toru and Serena discover a boat they need to use hanging from a tree. Serena jumps down from Toru's back to investigate. Clicking on the tree, Serena has four options available to her. These are Copy Me, Pick Up, Shake and Smash. The player chooses Shake 
Serena attempts to shake the tree, but this has no effect as she is not strong enough. The player chooses copy me, however, Toru is distracted by a couple of songbirds. Toru loves songbirds. The player clicks on the birds and a single contextual action to clap appears. Serena scares away the birds and Toru lets out a deep sigh. The player chooses copy me once again and this time Toru lets out a grunt of excitement. His attention is now on Serena. The player chooses shake. Serena sh attempts to shake the tree whilst Toru is watching. Toru then approaches and uses his mighty strength to shake the tree. The boat then comes crashing down. Sadly, the boat has been broken, but Toru can use his strength and Serena can use her intelligence to work together to repair the boat. There then follows a click and drag mini game to repair the boat. So at some points in the game, you're not only dealing with um, interactive objects in the environment, but you're also dealing with the way that Toru relates to the world emotionally. So sometimes he can get scared, sometimes he can get confused or overexcited or um, distracted by something. So it's your job as a player to prevent him from getting into these situations. But if he does, you need to use Serena to bring the situation under control as quickly as possible. So the Realm uses four main camera types. We have the regular single screen, uh, where all of the interaction and puzzles are contained on the one screen. Um, we also have the scrolling screen, where the camera can follow the characters as they traverse a, a larger landscape. Um, we have nested pictures, which focus specifically on close-up interactions and puzzles. And we also have picture-in-picture -picture events, which allow us to focus on specific character interactions and uh, animations and help to tell the story of the realm. One of the questions asked by one of the backers in the comments on our Kickstarter was, will the, the story be told purely in game? Will it be told with cutscenes? Uh, you know, a number of different methods. And actually, no one of those single methods is the method we're going to use. We're going to use a, a combination of all of them. Um, so we have a, a story that's in four acts. And during each um, piece, each act, uh, the story will be told through gameplay. So, you know, all of the, the, the story unfolding will happen in, in the game screens themselves in the levels. Um, but then at the end of each act, you will be uh, given a key sort of cutscene that wraps up everything that's happened in that act and sets you up for the next act. So it's almost like um, drip feeding story throughout the, the level itself and then doing a big sort of reveal and a big setup for the next act. And the key acts for this game are uh, the beginning. So you've got Serena, act one, which is her finding out her mother's sick, um, leaving the village against all the advice of, of the elders, um, going on her quest, and that act ends with the point that she meets Toru. Act two is uh, Toru and Serena getting to know each other, going on their adventures through the forest towards the city, coming across natural hazards, natural perils, but not meeting any sort of sinister evil beings yet or, or any of the unusual stuff that you'll see in this game. The end of act two is when they finally get to the edge of the city. Act three starts in the city and this is when things start to get weird and interesting. They start to come across all of the sort of uh, mythic sci-fi elements that we've been adding to the game, um, sinister dangers in the city, we, we learn about the location of the flower, and indeed Act 3 ends with the taking of the flower. And Act 4 is the journey, well, the escape from the city. And that's the bit that I don't want to give away at this point. <laughs>